the picks. All right, well, praise the Lord, and uh, we're coming to you this morning here from uh, 99.1 at the uh, here in Edmonton at the radio station. We're kindly uh, experiencing some technical difficulties uh, with the uh, radio program, and uh, if you turn on the radio uh, this morning, it's just static and everything, but we uh, God always makes a way, so we're going to send out the word that he's given uh, this morning to deliver. And uh, we're going to do it today here, and, and uh, there may be some that catch it now, or you may catch it later, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, so we're glad that you tuned in this morning, and, and we just pray that the Word of God will bless and touch hearts and lives, whoever may be listening. That's right. Brother Tony Morgan's over here, and, and uh, Brother Jackson Romine, hey, Sister man. Robin back here uh, working the uh, camera. And, She's the amen section back here, and and so we uh, we just uh, we want to have a good time. This is normally the setting that we have here, and uh, and we're we're running about 15, 20 minutes behind, but that's all right. We're going to deliver the word of God today, and uh, we pray that you're doing wonderful, that you're blessed right there where you are. We are in the midst of a great revival over in uh, Greensburg, Kentucky, this amen. past amen. week. And uh, God has moved in mighty and tremendous ways. And so we, we want to invite you this morning. Uh, it's not over tonight. We'll be uh, having our it's the last scheduled service tonight. But who knows what the Holy Spirit may do. And this thing may go on for weeks. And, and, uh, and we're praying that even tonight after the service that it will go on for weeks. And, you know, we, we're living in a time now where you have revival and people get stirred up people get fired up and and that flames of revival gets fanned but it don't take very long that those flames start to die out and, and uh, so we're praying that this revival this week will stir in hearts and lives for a long time Amen. and I tell you what God has just moved in mighty ways it has just done me good this weekend oh, yes. and I know each one that's been there has been blessed and stirred up I tell you last night I looked uh, Brother Jackson ministered the word of God last night and things just broke a loop and, and people were shouting and praising the Lord and testifying and I tell you it was just like old time Holy Ghost genuine move of the of the Spirit of God and people you looked on the people's faces and you could see the smiles and the countenance of people that they are just getting filled up and the cups are running over and that's what revival is all about and we need revival like that in the church and you know we're living in a time where people think well we shed a few tears and we get a little emotional and and you know we think that well God is moving in a mighty way well that's not a mighty move of God right. a mighty move of God is when you see the effects of the power of the Holy Ghost and you see what Paul said a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and that's what a move of God is and that's what we need today we can get emotional anytime but I tell you when the Spirit of God touches our spirit something happens and breaks a loose on the inside Amen. and you get stirred up and you draw closer to the Lord and he draws closer closer to you and you have such a passion and a desire to live for God and to walk in the spirit and that's real revival and it, revival's not for the world they're dead in trespasses and sins but when you when you a revival is meant for the people of God that were once alive but they have grown cold and indifferent and they've become cold and dead now and they need reviving they need they need a renewing in the spirit of their mind so you know we we just need to we need to tap into this thing we need to tap into the river which is the Holy Ghost hallelujah he's the only one that can bring revival Amen. we can't bring it the church can't bring it it has to come from God you can't build Amen. it you can't work it up, but it's prayed down. Hallelujah. Yeah, and yeah. we can tell this week that this revival has been prayed down. Amen. Hallelujah. And so tonight, Brother Andrew Davis is going to be ministering tonight. I think the phone's ringing, Jackson. I don't know if we need to uh, answer that, but uh, we'll just bear with us. We'll be going through some things, and, and uh, but we're going to get the Word of God out this morning, and everything's going to be just fine and, and uh, was a wrong wrong number it was a great telemarketer yeah give you extended warranty on your car that you don't even have 
Hallelujah. So, oh, my Lord, you know, just the like Lord. the devil, just a deceiver and liar, and uh, but praise God. So this morning we're going to minister. Let, let, let me say today, we want to invite you this morning. If you don't have a home church, we want to invite you out to Grace Union Baptist Church to come be with us. If you don't have a home church and you feel like the leading of the Holy Spirit is leading you to come and worship with us, we invite you with all we've got to come out and be with us. We're going to have a great, great time in the Lord. Lord, we always do. Every service is like revival meeting, and we want you to come out and be with us. Souls are being saved. Lives are being touched and changed. And that's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about anybody else. But that's why we've got to decrease, and he must increase. Right. And so, Amen. you know, God is moving in a mighty way in this final hour, in these last days. And so we invite you to come out and be with us. Uh, Sunday school is going to start at 10 o'clock. Worship service at 11. Come out and be with us, and we'll have a great great time you you'll That's be right. treated just like family the moment that you're there and uh, and so then tonight the revival continues on at the American Legion Park in Greensburg Kentucky and we invite everybody in the Green County area Taylor, Taylor County area Hart County Thank area you. and Metcalf Adair County come out be with us at the American Legion Park at six o'clock central Amen. time yep. for old time revival Amen. and uh, sister Faye Garrett and some of her family is going to be singing tonight. Seven, Brother eight, Andrew eight, Davis is going to be preaching, what's their name? Seven, eight, nine, Seven, nine. eight, nine and ten. They'll be out uh, singing tonight and ministering the Word of God. So we invite you to come out and be with us. I guarantee you one thing, we're going to have a great time in the Amen. Lord. We are dismissing our services at Grace Union tonight, and we'll be moving our service over there to that revival and, and being a part of it. And then Wednesday night, we'll be back on regular schedule. We'll be having Bible study at 6.30, so come out and be with us. We're going to have a great time. And, and uh, the most important thing, whether you come to Grace Union or anywhere, where, is that you get in a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church Amen. Where, the, Amen. where the preacher is preaching the Word of That's God right. and that he has convicted himself of what he's preaching. And uh, and so today, you know, this is the Lord's day. This is the day we assemble together. So we invite you to come out and be with us. If you're just now tuning in, this is normally the Grace Union Evangelism Program on, on 99.1. But we're having some problems this morning. But I tell you, the devil's not going to stop us That's in right. Jesus' name. Lord, That's the right. Lord will still go forth. Yes. The Bible says this gospel, good news of the gospel, shall be preached. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this morning we're going to do that. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We pray that whoever may be watching, that the Lord will stir you in, in your spirit and His Spirit will touch yours and yes. today you can be quickened by that Spirit. Yes. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We started last week on this and uh, on this that the Lord has given us ministering on the Holy Spirit and so uh, we, we pray that God touches you right there where you are. Heavenly Father, yes. we Heavenly come before Father, your holy Lord. presence once again this Thank morning you. in the mighty name of Jesus and God as we come before you, we ask that your mighty hand would bless us and touch us in this place today as we minister your mighty holy word. And I pray as it goes forth that your spirit, your spirit will touch every ear that hears what you are saying. And God, that Lord, not only will we be hearers, but God will be doers of your word. And Lord, today let your word go forth in power and demonstration of that Holy Spirit. And God, I pray, Lord, that it will be effective in the hearts and lives that hears your mighty word. And above all these things, I pray, God, if there's somebody that's listening today or watching this that's never been born again, I pray, God, that, Lord, conviction would come upon their heart and make them realize, God, that today is the day of salvation. And, Lord, that they can be born again by your spirit and made alive. And, Lord, we ask you today, Lord, fill us with your power. Power. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, Lord. We feel like Paul today. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves, but it comes from you, God. So we thank you and praise you today for what you're going to do. And we ask it all in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brother Jackson, will you care to say they got a, a water in there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Having some folk problems this morning, but that's all right. We cannot be stopped in the name of Jesus. That's Hallelujah. Right. Now, we started last week on, on something for the next couple of weeks and about the Holy Spirit. And I, I tell you what I really feel in my heart 
is we're living in a time right now. Paul said this, this last days is going to be perilous times, dangerous times, difficult times, desperate times. And we're in those days right now that we're living in. This is, this is the final hour that we are in right now. And I'm talking about the final hour before the trumpet of God sounds and the church is leaving out of here. But what I see today, we are living as, as we live in the church age, which you read about in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, we are in the final stage of the church age. I'm talking about we are in the Laodicean age. Uh, we are in the lukewarm age where the church, much of the church has grown lukewarm. They They've grown cold and indifferent. And in doing so, I really believe that much of the church today has really forgotten who the Holy Spirit is, what He can do, and the power that He has. Uh, I'm telling you today, Jesus said, uh, hallelujah, that He said it is expedient for you uh, that I go away. Yeah. What He's saying is, if He said, if I don't go away, He said the Comforter will not come. Right. And Brother Jackson preached on Him last night. He's talking about the third in the Godhead, the Comforter the one alongside to help the one that Jesus sent he's the third in the Godhead he is God the Holy Spirit Amen. the Holy Spirit is not a it he's a he Hallelujah. Yeah. and he has come Jesus has ascended to the Father's right hand and the Holy Spirit has come today. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm glad that He has. And now that, that Holy Spirit has been given as a gift to the church yeah. today. Every single one that has been born again and saved uh, all the way back to the cross, uh, the Holy Spirit has come in and took up residence in yeah. your heart and life. Yeah. Jesus said that Comforter will be in you. He'll be with you. And what I like about it, He will abide in you. Uh, he yeah. is in you today. Uh, and for the church, child of God, this body and your body has become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so our whole being, our whole life ought to be governed by the Holy Spirit. That's and not I'm... only should we have the Holy Spirit taking up residence in our heart, but he ought to, we ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about be filled up with, I'm talking about immersed in the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. And Amen. so Jesus said it is expedient for you. Now he wasn't just talking about the disciples when he said that to them. He was talking about you and I as well. He looked ahead in time. He said it is expedient for you uh, that I go away. He said, in other words, it's to your advantage uh, that I go away. I've got to go and, and do the work that God has sent me to do. I've got to go and lay my life down. Uh, hallelujah. As the perfect sacrifice. Uh, as the Lamb of God. Uh, and be the sacrifice. Uh, and by that blood. Uh, hallelujah. That is shed. Uh, it, would, it would wash away the sins uh, of the world. Hallelujah. Right. And so Jesus had to come uh, and fulfill the mission uh, of His Father. And He said when I'm finished with that work. Uh, Three days later, I'm going to be raised again. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to the Father's right hand. But Amen. he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. Praise God. Amen. He said, I'm Amen. not going to leave you as orphans uh, without a father, without a mother. I'm going to send the comforter. Hallelujah. And he's going to be with you everywhere that you go. Hallelujah. And right. so I feel like today that we have gotten so far as the church, the modern church, we have gotten so far away from the Holy Spirit, what He can do, man has come up and devised their own programs uh, and their own strategies and their own schemes uh, without the, uh, the counsel of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but you see, I've just been persuaded and convicted and convinced uh, that we cannot do one thing uh, and be effective in the That's kingdom right. of God except that the Holy That's Ghost right. uh, yeah. endows us uh, right. and endows the mission that That's He's right. given us with the power from on high. That's why right. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem 40 days uh, and you'll be in due clothed with that power from on high. Amen. We need that power. And he said, when you receive that power, he said, you be my witnesses. Uh, hallelujah. Now that's why they, we need the power. That's why they need the power. And that's why we need the power today. Because God has given us a work to do. Uh, and we cannot make an impact. And we cannot be effective except that we are endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful on the day of Pentecost uh, that Holy Ghost 
Ghost made his entrance into this, into the church. Hallelujah. And now today, not one thing has changed. We still need the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Right. And I've been convinced of that today. Now we'll get into a little bit more in the next couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully back on the radio program where folks can, can receive this word. Uh, but we'll be getting in more about uh, being filled with the Spirit and, and letting the Spirit guide you and lead you in all your walk in this life. Uh, not just in the church services, not just being at church, uh, but in your daily living. How we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody right. said, well, I didn't think the Baptists believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, it ain't about being a Baptist. Right. But you're looking at one who pastors a Baptist church uh, who believes in being filled with the Amen. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I know well enough to know that we've got to have him That's to be right. effective. That's Hallelujah. Right. And Amen. I'll say this. I thought this last night as Brother Jackson was preaching, he was talking about the Comforter as he was ministering the Word of God. I began to think last night, you know, it, you know, we, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I thought, you know, it may not win talent contests. It may not win talent shows. Right. It may not appeal to the rest of the world. Right. But one thing about it, it'll win souls. Amen. 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 And that's what we need today. And our mindset ought to be winning the loss to Amen. Jesus. Our mindset ought to be feeding the sheep. Amen. Feeding the flock of God. And building folks up in the faith. And I'm telling you today, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And let me say this. For all those that are listening, August the 7th. I want you to mark your calendars down. August the 7th. We're going to have on Saturday evening our night of empowerment. It's our second annual night of empowerment. We had it last year. And I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost ghost fell on the place. Uh, yes. People were stirred up. People were filled up. And people are still talking about that service. Yes. And God has led us to do it once again. Yeah. Hallelujah. The August the 7th. So the mark Holy your Spirit. calendars for that. We're going to have a great time. And let me tell you something. If you're hungry for the Lord, if you're hungry to be filled with the Spirit of God, if you're hungry for more of the power of the Holy yes. Ghost, uh, you need to come out that night. Hallelujah. And it's not that we can give it to you. It's not that we can hand it over to you, but we're right. going gonna to minister what God's given us that night, Amen. and I believe people's going to receive, I Amen. believe people's going to receive it. You know, Jesus said, he said, if you being evil, he said, if you being natural, in your natural human form, in your natural human mind, now, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, now, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Hallelujah. So it's not God, it, it's God's will for you to have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I don't care what one preacher tells you. I don't care what one pastor tells you that yeah. you don't need it. He's wrong. Hallelujah. Right. You've right. got to have it. Glory right. to God. Amen. So this morning, well, I want to go through uh, today as we talked about the Holy Spirit. I wanted to look some of the things that how the Holy Spirit suffers uh, in our lives and in the church. And somebody said, what do you mean the Holy Spirit suffers? Well, when you go back to the book of Psalms, you see with the children of of Israel. The Bible says that God was leading them through the wilderness. Uh, he provided everything that they needed. He provided manna from heaven. Uh, he gave them water from the rock. Uh, he led them with a cloud by day and a fire by night. He, he gave them every provision that they needed. And God is doing the same thing for the church today. Amen. He has given us every provision that we need uh, in these final days to win souls to the kingdom before it's everlasting. Right eternally too late. Right, and that's right. why we've got to tap into it. But the Bible says uh, that while they were in the wilderness, uh, they were full of rebellion. They were full of unbelief. I'm talking about the children of God. Yeah. And the psalmist said uh, that out there in that wilderness, God had prepared a table for them, uh, but they limited the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. And let me tell you something. He is a limitless God. There is no limit to what God can do. Amen. There is no limit to what the third in the God Head can do That's the God. Holy Ghost because He is God. That's he God. is a limitless God. Now, but God. there is something that we need to understand today. We can limit. And I believe that today much of the church, the modern church is limiting the Holy Ghost uh, and what He can do. But let me tell you something. Never underestimate what the Holy Spirit can do. There is no limit to what He can do. He can still, by the power of the Holy Spirit, He can 
can still raise up the dead. He can still open blinded eyes. He can still make the deaf hear. That's he right. can still make the lame to walk. Right. He yep. can still cast out demons. Right. He can still save those right. that are in bondage and captivity of Amen. sin. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And he can do it today. Even in this final right. hour. Hallelujah. Right. The Holy Spirit. Spirit is still here. Yeah, He's still right. real. Right. He's still operating and moving. And maybe some don't believe it. Well, let me tell you, you need to come out to Grace Union sometime and see the operation of the Holy Spirit. He is still working in this final hour. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. And so he's he suffers at the hands of man today, the Holy Spirit. So I thought of this some things that I wrote them down. As the Lord lead, and I thought about some ways how and in what way does the Holy Spirit suffer at the hands of man. Number one, I thought about it in Matthew chapter 12. If you've got your Bibles there where you are listening, if, if not, that's okay, I'll read it. But the first thing I thought of is something that's the most dangerous and the most serious offense that one can do when they blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Right. And so Jesus talked about it in Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. We talk about, we're talking about the suffering of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, how and in what way does the Holy Spirit suffer at the hands of man? Well, we go to Matthew 12, verse 24. The Bible says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out demons, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. And so Jesus had just casted out some demons by the miracle, by his mighty miracle working power. And right. the old self righteous, the old religious crowd, the Pharisees. And I'm telling you today, we We've got modern day Pharisees in the church today. They're self-righteous. They think they're holier than everybody else. Yeah. They may even know the Bible from front to back. But the, Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you're like white sepulchers. You're like the tombs out there. You're whitewashed on the outside. You're beautiful out there on the outside, but on the inside you're full of dead man's bones. Come you on. see, the Pharisees didn't recognize the power of God. They didn't recognize the power of the Holy Spirit. And many today in the church of the self-righteous crowd, they don't recognize the moving of the Holy Spirit. And so they, they accuse Jesus of casting out demons by the power of the devil. That's what they said. And, and Jesus knew their thoughts uh, and he said to them, every kingdom divided it against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Meaning that what Jesus is telling them, he's saying you're accusing me of casting out these demons by the power of darkness, by the power of Satan. But what Jesus is saying here is that Satan does not oppose himself. And the kingdom of Satan, Satan is not going to use his power to cast out demons because Satan is here for one mission and one mission only and that's to kill, steal, and to destroy. He's out Amen. to destroy lives and That's Satan right. has an army. That's Satan right. has a kingdom, uh, an army of demons, uh, of demonic powers that's out to destroy us. That's his army. And so Jesus is saying Satan is not going to come to one, that he has a mission to destroy that soul uh, and he's not going to cast out his own army out of that individual. And so Jesus said if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? They're talking about the kingdom of darkness. And if I by Beelzebub cast out demons uh, by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be uh, your judges and see the Pharisees they even claim to cast out demons uh, but they had no power because you've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. Amen. and the Bible says uh, and if I by Beelzebub cast out demons by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges uh, but if I Jesus said uh, cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house uh, and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man uh, and then he will spoil his house. Satan yep. is that strong man. Uh, and the Bible Jesus said, he that is not with me uh, is against me. And he that gathers not with me uh, scatters abroad. Uh, now he goes on to verse 31 and Jesus begins to talk about 
He said, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. Yeah. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the third in the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is the wonder working power. He is the third in the Godhead. Jesus said, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, Jesus, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this this world, neither in the world to come. Amen. So the first thing I think about that the Holy Spirit suffers at the hands of man is that he is blessed blasphemed by man, blasphemed by the hearts of man. Uh, you see, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, a lot of people got the wrong idea what blasphemy is. Uh, and there is a certain aspect of blasphemy that is that is considered rejecting Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior. But the true meaning of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost uh, is when you are simply attributing to Satan uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, what God has done through the Holy Spirit how that the Holy Spirit convicts hearts and lives to be saved, how the Holy Spirit stirs in our hearts uh, and, and, and stirs till our cup run of over. Right. Hallelujah. You see, when we compare verse 24 with verse 28, that, that the Pharisees said, this man cast, does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. But Jesus said, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. We can plainly see this sin. This was a most serious sin of the Pharisees that it became the climax of their denial of the truth that these miracles that Jesus performed were because of the power of Almighty God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So let me ask this question. How much better is it when the Holy Spirit is moving and working in the hearts and lives and changing life and miracles are being performed, hallelujah, by the Holy Spirit? Uh, how much better is it that when we got folks in the church that complain uh, and talk about it and maybe they try to credit the work of the Holy Spirit to the mere excitement of, 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 of the world? You see, that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. But let me tell you, in Mark 33, 29, Jesus said, He that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost has never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. In other words, he is guilty of an eternal sin. Hallelujah. You see, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is a definite act. Act, and it's showing a state of sin. This is a willful act when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. When you accredit to the devil what the Holy Spirit is doing. It's a determined opposition to the present power of the Holy Spirit. You think we don't have it in our churches today? My friend, you're wrong. We've got it in our churches. Let me take, give you a good example. When you've got people in the church that could care less what God does in the work of the Holy Holy Spirit when they could care less what goes on uh, in the house of God and the Holy Ghost is moving and saving souls and changing lives and people are being stirred up with revival by the Holy Spirit and you've got folks that complain how long the service is, how long the preaching is, how long the, and how loud the singing is and everything and at the same time the anointing of the Holy Ghost is flowing my friend that is if it's not blaspheming the Holy Spirit it certainly is borderline you're giving credit to the devil you're complaining about what the Holy Spirit is doing. My friend, you need to recognize the seriousness uh, of this sin. Hallelujah. We need to get hooked up to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We Amen. need to get hooked up to the Holy Ghost power. But let me say this this morning. Uh, you see a true born again child of God. One who's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, one who's been had a born again experience. One who's been saved. You see they won't settle in this willful act. They won't settle in this sinful act. Uh, you see they'll hate it just like any sin that they have. And they'll repent because my friend when you're born again you have a, you, you get personal with the Holy Spirit. He comes on the inside and lives. And when you get born again, you can't 
deny the working and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are we on the air now? Yeah, we're on the air. Well, we're glory back, to we're back God. On the radio. We're back on the radio live. Well, hallelujah. Well, I tell you, we, we're glad we are. If you just tuned in, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the, we're talking about how the Holy Spirit this morning, how that He suffers at the hands of man today. We just got through finished talking about the blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. When people accredit the work of the Holy Spirit to what the uh, to the devil, and they, uh, you know, let me tell you, it's a most serious sin today. Hallelujah. The second thing, how the Holy Spirit suffers at the hands of man. Now, when you go over to the book of Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 10 you'll see that the Holy Spirit one way that he suffers at the hands of man he suffers uh, when the Holy Spirit is insulted by man's pride uh, when you go to Hebrews chapter 10 uh, in verse 26 uh, you'll see that the Bible says for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation that's speaking of God's spirit that's a terrifying expectation of judgment and the Bible says uh, the Bible says that, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries Hallelujah. You see, it's God's way and that's final. Hallelujah. And I believe I'll go God's way. I Amen. believe I'll go Amen. God's way. I don't want to experience His wrath. I don't want to experience His fiery indignation. I'm glad I passed. I passed from condemnation unto life. Hallelujah. But He said, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sore punishment or more severe punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant that's going about the blood of the new covenant the blood of Jesus wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and listen to this and has done despite unto the spirit of grace in other words he has insulted the Holy Spirit of God Amen. hallelujah as in, in other words as if Christ had never even died and the Bible says, For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord, or I will repay. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And it is a fearful thing. It's a terrifying thing yes, to is. fall into the hands of the living God, you Amen. See, this morning that tells me that the Holy Spirit is insulted by man's pride. Uh, you see, in these right. scriptures that we just read, uh, we have the most solemn, solemn warning of all. And see, you got to understand when you're saved and born again, the more you study, the more you, the closer you get to the Lord, and the more that you you study into the mind of Christ and the mind of God. People have to realize today, knowledge creates responsibility. The more that you know about God, the more that you know about how to live for God in the way of God, and the more you know about how to let the Holy Spirit guide you and direct you, the more responsibility that you have. You see, those folks who these scriptures describe are, are those who in their pride, the pride of their heart, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, you go down to verse 29. How much more severe punishment shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God? That's a spirit of pride. Uh, when you say, I don't need, uh, I don't need Jesus, the Son of God. I don't need the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about people in the church today. They say they think they can live this life without the Holy Spirit intervening with them. You see, pride is an evil, self-sufficient spirit that says, I don't need God to tell me what I need to do where I need to go. And verse 29 says these people have trodden underfoot the Son of God and they counted the blood uh, of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. They, they, they have counted it as nothing just like Christ had never died. Uh, that's man's pride. Uh, you see man, uh, their pride has kept uh, many of people uh, out of heaven in the kingdom of God. Uh, yes. Many people are in hell today because of their pride. Uh, the pride of their heart. But then you turn that around. You've got people in the church today that are so full of pride. They, they, don't, they don't recognize the moving of the Holy Spirit. They don't recognize how that the Holy Spirit moves. And the Holy Spirit is insulted by man's pride. And so to deny the divine power and the divine presence
presence of Jesus Christ, uh, how precious that his blood is, uh, is to despise uh, yeah. the very testimony of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that has come to us uh, and convicted us of our sins. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit that shows us uh, how important it is that we need to be saved. Uh, how important it is that the blood of Jesus be applied to the doorpost of our heart and our life. Uh, and we despise the testimony of the Holy Spirit when we reject in our pride. Uh, we reject what God has done for us. Uh, in Amen. other words, we insist Salt him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go over to another in the book of Isaiah chapter 63. The third thing that I thought about how that the Holy Spirit suffers at the hands of man. In Isaiah chapter 63, I began to think about how that the Holy Spirit is angered or the Holy Spirit is vexed by the disobedience of of man. You see, when we're disobedient to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is vexed and he's angered by our disobedience. In Isaiah chapter 63, Verse 7, the Bible says, I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he has bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. You see, I'm thankful today if it's not for his mercy, we would be in trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, for he said, surely they are my people. People. And let me tell you something today. The church is his people today. Uh, hallelujah. For as many as received him. Uh, hallelujah. To them gave he power and authority to become the sons of God. Uh, now we have been grafted in. Uh, hallelujah. With the with the as God's people. Well, as his children, he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior in all their affliction. He's talking about when they were down in Egypt's land. Uh, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence, hallelujah, saved them. Uh, in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them all the days of old. Uh, hallelujah, I'm telling you. But the Bible says in verse 10 of Isaiah 60, Three, the Bible says, but they rebelled uh, and vexed his Holy Spirit. Now you think about that. They angered his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. He's talking about while they were in the wilderness. Uh, you see, God, the Bible says, in love, uh, God redeemed them, uh, just like he did you and I when we got saved and born again. Uh, in his great infinite love, he redeemed us, uh, and he redeemed the children of Israel out of Egypt. Egypt's land. But the Bible says they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Think of how often you and I are disobedient to the will of God. How that the Holy Spirit people say today the Holy Spirit doesn't speak and move in that way anymore today. Let me tell you something friend, you come by too late to tell me that. That's right. Hallelujah. He still moves and operates and speaks today. The reason maybe you haven't heard the voice of the God through the Holy Spirit is maybe you're a ears are not open and they become spiritually yeah. deaf. Hallelujah. You don't hear the voice of the Lord anymore. But let me tell you, when we disobey that voice, the Holy Spirit is vexed with us. He's angered at us. Hallelujah. And so you think of how often when the Holy Spirit reveals something to us in our hearts that we've been doing that is not right in the will of God. And instead of being thankful that the Holy Spirit has revealed that thing to us, you see the proud heart rebels and refuses to confess that time before God. Therefore when we do that, the Holy Spirit is vexed. He's angered. Or in other words, he's irritated and cannot give the blessing that God desires to give to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit in the middle of a church service tells you to go shake somebody's hand or tells you to go tell somebody you love them or tells you to get up and sing or tells you to testify. Well, the Holy Spirit tells you, hallelujah, to go and tell somebody yeah, about man. Jesus. Yeah. How many times have we been disobedient to the will of the Holy Spirit? Yes. And you know what happens? God withholds His blessings from yes. us. Right. Because 
Because we've been disobedient to the Holy Spirit. Right. And the Holy Spirit becomes vexed, becomes angered with us. Right. Hallelujah. I, you see, that's why you, we can't question the Holy Spirit. If he tells us to do something, we ought to do it. You see, there's a reason why that he does it. And it may seem strange to us, but you can rest assured if the Holy Spirit is leading us to do it, God is working on the other end. Hallelujah. And he's going to make it come to pass whatever his will is. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the second, the the, the, the third, uh, fourth thing that I want to look at in Acts chapter seven, Acts chapter seven. One way that the Holy Spirit suffers at the hands of man is that he is resisted by man's unbelief. There's a lot of people today doesn't even believe in the Holy Spirit. Right. And that's hard to understand, but yes, they don't. Is. And when we go to Acts chapter seven, verse fifty-one. We see when Stephen is standing there before the Sanhedrin. This is what Stephen preached to those people. He said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. You see, they resisted the Holy Spirit. So when you resist the Holy Spirit, you've got to understand today that's the third in the Godhead. He is God. Yeah. He is God the Holy Spirit. When you resist the Holy Spirit, you are resisting God. Right. And so Amen. I thought about the Holy Spirit is resisted by man's unbelief. When we go to the back to the book of Hebrews, uh, in Hebrews chapter 3, the Bible tells us that when we doubt the word of God, the Holy Spirit is resisted. In, in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. That's the voice of God. As in the provocation, of the, in other words, the day that Israel provoked God. In the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works for 40 years. He said, See, the, the root of all sin is not believing God. The root of all sin is unbelief. The root of all disobedience and the Holy Spirit suffering is when we have unbelief in our heart. And you know, people say, well, I just don't see how the children of God that have been saved can have unbelief. Well, there's different ways you can have unbelief. Right. You can deny the work of the Holy Spirit. You can deny the things that the Holy Spirit is doing, and that is simply unbelief. You see, the miracles that God was performing for the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness, uh, those miracles were all around them. Uh, they saw the mighty works of God. They saw the miracles that God did, uh, but they had unbelief, uh, and they had rebellion. Uh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, God said, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation. You know why? Because of their unbelief. And he said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. You see, they could have known his ways and there's people in the church today that can know his ways but they've had a, they have a wilderness experience. In other words, they deny the Holy Spirit. They deny the work of the Holy Spirit. So when we doubt the word of God, the Holy Spirit is resisted. But let me tell you something. If we have a desire for the Holy Spirit to provide rest in our hearts, to give us peace that passes all understanding, to give us joy that's unspeakable, yep. let me tell you, then the word of God must be believed. You can't take the word of God Amen. in one place and rip it out and then go to another place and believe that place. You have to take the whole counsel of God. You have to believe the whole word of God. And let me tell you, what was good enough for the early church yeah. is good, good enough, enough for, for us, us today. Right. And I get so sick of hearing folks say, well, don't that it. power and those gifts of the Spirit and all those things, they all went out with the old apostle. Oh, well, let me is. tell you something, that's nothing but baloney. That's let right. me tell you something. We need those gifts today. Right. We need the power of the Holy Ghost today. Amen. More than we ever did. Amen. But we've got folks in the church today that are living in unbelief right. and they don't believe that the Holy Spirit can move like it did in those days. Right. But I'm telling you, if we'll get a hungry heart and we'll get that desire in us and we'll take God's word for what it says and we'll quit twisting the word of God. We'll quit trying to make the word of God fit our life and the way our limit and we'll line our life up with that word and we believe every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God and we believe it in faith that if God did it then 
Hallelujah. He can do it today. Hallelujah. I'm talking about in faith, believe yeah, right. Can Amen. you know that he's right. word? Let me tell you something today. God will be, he'll manifest himself through the power of the Holy Ghost in our hearts and lives. And he'll do a work. I'm telling you that is unlike anything we've ever seen. Hallelujah. Right. Glory to God. We've got to believe him today. We've got Amen. to take God's word and believe God's word. I had a preacher tell me here a while back. He said, I just can't take the Holy Bible. He said, it's an antique. It's an antique book. I just can't rely on it. He said, in this day and age, to be able to win the young people and to be able to rely on and he, he's using secular books and counseling books. I thought to myself, what in the world do you have if you don't have the Word of God? Now, let Amen. me tell you something. That's the right. Word of God is all we need. It is That's sufficient. Right. And That's let me right. tell you, you can, you can bank on the Word of Amen. God. Amen. You can count on the Word Amen. of God. Amen. You can take God's Word. That's hallelujah. Right. Hide it in your heart that you may not sin against God. Right. And the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light to our path. And we hide it that we may not sin sin yeah, against God. Right. We put it in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad today. I don't have one ounce of unbelief or doubt in the word of God today. I stand on that word. I believe in that word. Hallelujah. And I believe God can do it. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's now not only that but he is tempted by man's insecurity. Let me tell you, there was a story in the Bible in the book of Acts, chapter 5, of two people in the church. They were husband and wife, Ananias and Sapphire. The Bible says that they came before the church. They were seeking to deceive the church folk. You know that story. But instead they tempted and they lied against the Holy Ghost. They didn't come against the church. They didn't lie to the church. They didn't lie to Peter and John and all those leaders in the early church. The Bible says they lied to the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, people, today, they are insincere about the things of God. I'm talking about in the church. We've got people in the church today that are playing games with God. People that are playing fast and loose with God. And so the Holy Ghost is tempted by man's insincerity. Come on. I'm telling you, we're living in a time now that the church better get up and get girded up and press in and pray like never before. Hallelujah. We need to take this things seriously. We need to be sincere about the things of yeah. God and the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, a man or a woman is guilty of this. Uh, when they pretend, which is what Ananias and Sapphire did, when they pretend that they are fully devoted to God, and they are, you got people in the church today, I mean, they've got the religious garment on. Uh, I mean, they can get in a highfalutin Holy Ghost meeting uh, where everybody's shouting, raising their hands and then they can get there and they know the whole routine and they can look good uh, right. but in their heart they're not completely That's and fully right. devoted to God. Uh, right. You see they pretend they are uh, but at the same time uh, they are indulging in their secret sins and the things of this world. Uh, you see many try to look more holy before men than they do before God right. but we need to make up minds uh, we're going to try and seek to please God God, rather than man. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Let me just say a few more things and then we'll have to cut off here. I know some probably caught this program late. We're talking today about the Holy Spirit being, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit suffering at the hands of man. We need to recognize who the Holy Spirit is today and what He can do and the power that He has. The sixth thing that I thought just real fast, uh, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, quench not the Spirit of God. Uh, yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. We ought to not quench the Spirit of God. That word quench means extinguish. Uh, we ought not, it's just like a fire that's blazing. Uh, we ought not take a spiritual fire extinguisher and try to put it out. Right. If the fire of the Holy Ghost is falling, and moving. We need to we need to stoke that fire. Yep. We need to stir up that fire. Yep. I tell you the Holy Spirit suffers at the hands of man when he is quenched and he is extinguished. And then the last thing that I thought the Holy Spirit is grieved. Let me let me read in Ephesians chapter 4. When the Holy Spirit is grieved by man. Now that means that fellowship has been broken with the Holy Spirit. And so Paul, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. The Bible says, Wherefore, putting away lying, that's falsehood, 
Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Yep. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. In other words, don't give the devil an opportunity. He said, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication, that's rotten communication, proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Yeah. Now he said this, talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God. Let me say it one more time. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, yeah. whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from yeah. you with all malice. That's all kinds of evil behavior. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, let me tell you, verse 25 through 29. Those are the things that grieve the Holy Spirit. What that means, grieving the Holy Spirit means. Uh, those are the things that breaks the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. When you've got those things going on in the church, I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about malice. I'm talking about evil speaking. I'm talking about gossip and backbiting and tailbearing. Let me tell you something, my friend. Uh, you may be a child of God. You may be saved and born again. But you may go out with an evil heart uh, where you go out and you talk about everybody in the church. Uh, you go out and you speak evil of those, your brothers and sisters. Uh, you go out and you backbite and you gossip. Let me tell you something. There is no way that the Holy Spirit can work in your heart and life when you're living like that and you're living your life in that kind of evil walk. Uh, the Holy Spirit, you cannot have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And grieving the Holy Spirit breaks that fellowship. And let me tell you, the Holy Spirit wants to grow and build and prosper the child of God. He wants to work in our hearts and life. But We've got to get our lives, hallelujah, we've got to get it in tune and in line with the Word of God, what the Word of God says, how that we ought to walk in the Spirit. And when we walk in the Spirit, we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh and the desires of the flesh and the cravings that we have. You see, He cannot and will not fellowship in unprofitable talk and evil speaking. You see, I don't want the Holy Spirit to be grieved. I, I want Him to I want him to be manifested. I want His power to be manifested in our heart and life because I need Him. Hallelujah. You need Him today. And in order for that fellowship to come, you see, there's nothing like the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I'm not just talking about a church. I'm talking about when you're home alone. I'm talking about when you're riding down the road by yourself uh, and the Holy Spirit is with you and you're, 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 you're having fellowship with the Holy Spirit and he's, he's filling you up and your cup is running over and you're maybe crying tears of joy and you're giving him praise. Uh, hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit that's being right. manifested in you. Hallelujah. And I tell you, that's what will get you through this world. Glory to God. Glory to God. You new brothers got anything? No, go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, next week, I feel like we're just going to be, we're going to look at the receiving of the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at the conditions of receiving the Holy Spirit. You see, we're all vessels, that, and, and, and the vessel has to be emptied out and cleaned out of everything that's worldly that the Holy Spirit, we could receive the Holy Spirit. And, and let me tell you something, we need Him. We can't make it without Him. We need His guidance, His direction, right. His leadership. The church of today needs to understand who the Holy Spirit is. Hallelujah. And I tell you today, I'm so glad for Him. I'm glad that God sent that Holy Spirit. I'm glad He's with us everywhere we go. Yes. He's a mighty good God. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I, we're going to just play this song right here. And I hope you feel the way this song feels. Uh, hallelujah. It simply says to me, He's become everything. Uh, and I hope Jesus has become everything to you. Uh, I want you to listen to this song. Let it touch your heart today. And if you feel like you need to be saved, if you're being convicted by the Holy Spirit, I tell you, we're going to.
to come back after this song. We're going to have prayer. And, uh, and we're going to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Master and Savior of your life. Uh, if you've been saved and you've wandered for him, we're going to give you an opportunity. Hallelujah. To fall in love with Jesus all over again. But I want you to listen to this song. It says, to me, he's become everything. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Will some have made Jesus a game that they play? To others, a song that they sing. Oh, but since I met Jesus, I'm happy to say, yeah. to me, he's become everything. Jesus. He'll save you, set you free. He'll give you liberty like you've never known before. He'll set you free from every bondage, every captivity. If you're listening today and you're sinking in the depths of sin and you're out there and you just feel like you can't get ahead, just like you just tormented day and night. Well, I want to tell you, there is one who loves you today. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. He died for you. He took your yeah. place at Calvary's Hill. Oh, he died for every sin. He That's died, right. Lord, hallelujah. He died to set you free. And the Bible says, Jesus said, he who the Son is set free is free, free indeed. indeed. Right there where you are, you can call on the name of Jesus. He'll cleanse you by his blood. He'll wash you clean, purify you. He'll give you a brand new life. He'll give you new meaning to life. He'll give you a brand new purpose. Hallelujah. Why don't you call on him right there where you are? Amen. We're going to pray with you and pray for you. And you have to pray your own prayer. We can't pray it for you. But if you want to touch from God right there where you are, you can call on him. Hallelujah. If you've been saved but you've wandered away from him, why don't you call on him today and he'll... He'll do for you what, I mean, he'll, you'll have an experience, hallelujah, with the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name right now. Lord, believing today that you're almighty, you're all-powerful, that there's nothing too big for you, nothing too hard for you. And Lord, we ask you today for all those that are listening, that God, you'll send your mighty hand of power down upon each one. Those that are struggling today, those that are lost without you, those that have not been born again, but the convicting power of the Holy Spirit is touching their heart and life right now. 
I pray, God, that you would move upon them so strongly that they'll realize, God, that without you, Lord, they, they won't make it in this life nor the life to come. But God, that today they can turn their eyes upon you and they can be set free and made brand new. Lord, before it's everlasting today, I pray for those that need the fire of the Holy Ghost within them. I pray, Lord, that they'll stir up that gift of God that is within them. And those flames of revival can be rekindled, Lord, in their heart. And God, they can be touched. And Lord, their cups can be filled till they run over. Lord, we thank you. We praise you today. For your mighty wonder working power. And Lord, we thank you today for the glorious plan of salvation that you made available to any and whosoever that would call upon. God, we thank you today for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Let me say to you, I, I don't think you got to hear it uh, at the beginning, but we are we are tonight. We'll be back at the American Legion Park in Greensburg, Kentucky at 6 o'clock tonight for the last last night of, of the old time revival that we've been having down and I'm telling you it's been one more kind of revival. The spirit of God's been moving in a mighty way. Brother Andrew Davis won't be preaching tonight. Come out and be with us. Bring your, bring a car load. Bring a bus load. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Bring your neighbors. Bring your church people. I tell you we're going to have a great time tonight in the Lord. Six o'clock tonight at the American Legion Park in Greensburg, Kentucky. We love you this morning we praise God for you we apologize for all the technical difficulties but we praise God that it's up and running and you have a blessed day in the Lord if you don't have a home church this morning come out be with us at Grace Union Baptist Church right on 3611 Sutton Road come out be with us at 11 o'clock worship service God bless each and every one of you today and this week is our prayer keep looking up our redemption is drawing nigh hallelujah we love you and God bless each one.